Hello there and welcome back to another ITH video and welcome to a beautiful sunny day here in the south of England and today is a good day because today is a hot hatch day and you all know how much I love a hot hatch and this one is a very small quite low powered hot hatch the Suzuki Swift Sport. I'm going to go out and I'm going to find some very tight very twisty roads and have a lot of fun. Bye! So here we are in the Suzuki Swift Sport. Now, we need to talk about where this car sits in the marketplace. Generally, we're gonna have, in this sort of slightly hot hatchy market, we can relate it to what things Volkswagen offer because they were, and still probably are, some of the benchmarks. So you have the Up GTI, which is the really small one. Then you have the Polo GTI and the Golf GTI. Now then, this doesn't actually conform to those normal sizes, I don't think, in terms of power at least. In terms of size, this is roughly the same size as uh, the Polo GTI, tiny bit smaller. But this has 138 horsepower versus the Polo's 200 horsepower. And the Up GTI, that has about 115, so it does sit directly between the two. So you'd think it was just sitting in a bit of a no man's land. But to understand this, we need to talk about power to weight ratio, which is very, very important, especially in a hot hatch. So this may have 138 horsepower and the Polo 200, but this Suzuki Swift Sport weighs under a ton. It's very important, under a ton. The Polo GTI, which has 200, sits there at 1,350 kilograms. That's quite a weighty number. And you've got to think, that is sitting 350 to 400 kilograms heavier than this Swift Sport. And what does that mean? That means this has got 140 horsepower per ton and the, go and the Polo's only got 148 horsepower per ton. So it's not actually that big a difference and this is a lot cheaper. Now, of course, another key sort of rival around the same sort of size and pricing is the Ford Fiesta ST. Now, it's probably best not to talk about that one because price, power, power to weight ratio is 157. Yeah, that's quite a lot better, but we'll come back onto the Fiesta ST later. So when you're talking about a hot hatch, of course, something that's very important is how it looks. You wanna walk out of your house in the morning and go, yes, I'm gonna drive the wheels off that thing. And the Swift, hmm. It kind of does, but it kind of doesn't. It's, it's a bit, bit tricky, I find. From some angles, it's great. So when you look at the front, if you sort of a front three quarter shot, I think it looks fantastic. It looks really sort of sporty and aggressive and yeah, big fan. And you just sort of catch a glimpse as you're walking away from the thing of the rear three quarter shot. And it just looks a little jumpy. I hate to use that phrase, but it just looks a bit dumpy around the back. I think one of the problems is it looks like the wheels are a little too small. Now, I have actually no problem with the wheels being the size they are, because you've got decent sized wheels with a decent bit of sidewall, which really helps with the ride quality and all that kind of stuff. It's just visually, it loses something out to, again, something like the Fiesta ST. However, it's not, it's not all bad to me. That it's, as I said, from the front three quarter, it looks really good. And there are some really nice little details all over it. Um, overall, it doesn't look, I don't think, quite as good as the old Swift Sport, but it's still a good looking car. Now, this is some 
software that has really surprised me. Genuinely surprised me, this thing. I was expecting, because this is a fairly cheap Suzuki, I mean, it's prejudice on my, my behalf, probably, but I was expecting it to be quite plasticky and not very nice looking and basically a bit rubbish inside. You know, they spent all the money on the dampers and engine and making it handle well. Um, but you know what? This is really nice. There are some really nice details. There's this kind of faux carbon fiber red trim stuff, which kind of fades from light to dark and things. It's really quite nice. The steering wheel is very nice, I've got to say. It has got all the steering wheel controls in it. It's got a very, it's got a very uh, Volkswagen-esque bit of styling, a little chrome trim on it there. It, it is very much like the ones I've had on my Seat and my Skoda and Volkswagens in the past. It's very, very, very similar. But if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Now, bear in mind, this is 18, 19 grand. You get adaptive cruise control as standard on this car. Well, you've got lane departure warning, some very nice, quite sporty seats. They hold you in nicely, I must say. There's a very good infotainment system. The sat-nav is okay. It, it, it's passable, I must say. Um, it's exactly the same as you get in the Suzuki Jimny that I uh, tested recently. So there's things like a reversing camera and, you know, automatic lights, automatic wipers, all of that stuff, basically. Any bit of kit you could probably want in this, it's got a standard. I mean, it's fantastic. I'm really, really impressed. And yes, there are some slightly hard touch plastics over there, but for the driver, you've got this very lovely steering wheel here. You've got all nice kind of fairly soft touch plastics everywhere else. It's, it's a very nice place to sit. So now we've covered all that nonsense about the outside and the inside, we need to talk about what actually matters with a hot hatch, okay? Which is how it drives. And that is the best news of all about this Suzuki Swift Sport. Here I am barreling into one of many, many roundabouts around here. And you know what? This thing is so, so much fun and a lot quicker than I was expecting. Jesus. Right, when you punch this thing in third gear, it boost, goes up, goes up, it gets to about 3,000 RPM and it absolutely takes off. This is far, far quicker than it has any right to be with 138 horsepower. Now, as I said, that's all down to the weight and the fact that the, the reason this feels so light and nimble is it's light on its feet, it doesn't wallow. The, the Polo GTI feels like you're driving a barge by comparison, and that's a good handling car. It's an absolute hoot to drive this thing. Here's an example. There are a couple of roundabouts here. Right. Floor it, round it goes. Now, this is like driving a little go-kart. You go in, you go round. It's just fantastic blasters up through the gears, third gear, and again, it takes off. I guess it's this little turbo boost jet, whatever it's called, engine, and when it comes on boost, it is flipping hilarious. This embodies everything that a hot hatch should be in terms of the fun. You can rev the nuts off it and have enormous fun. The gearbox is fantastic as well. A little snickety six-speed box, just throwing it around through the gears, short throw, absolutely brilliant. Driving position, really good. Loads of adjustment as well. Up, down, in, out on the steering wheel. The seat could do going a tiny bit lower for me, but other than that, it, it's genuinely, it's, it's a really, really good driving position. And of course, the bonus about these sorts of cars is you can throw it around like this. You can chuck it around, rev it out to anything, and it's still averaging 45 to the gallon. It's absolutely brilliant. This is a small engine, light car. It, this is it. The key to everything is lightness. It's what Alpine have done with the A110. If you keep a car light, everything, everything is better. The engine doesn't have to work as hard. You, the end, so you end up with better economy. You don't have to, the dampers don't have to work as hard, so you can tune them more finely. Everything is better when a car is lighter. Okay, 
right, so what's the summary of this Suzuki Swift Sport? Well, it's a tricky one, really. I really like this car. It's huge fun to drive. I think it looks okay. It's good value for money. You get a lot of kit for it. The biggest problem it's got is the Fiesta ST. And the problem, the thing people would say is that the Fiesta is 2,000-ish pounds more. Yes, it is, but I looked at the finance deals, and if you look at a finance deal on this car, it's if you put four grand down over four years, it's about, I think it's 212 pounds a month. If you put 4,000 pounds down over four years on the Fiesta ST2, it's 225 pounds a month. So it's like 13 pound a month more. And that's because Ford obviously do a lot more support and their rates are better and all that kind of stuff. Now, if you're saying, if you're gonna pay out, would I pay 2,000 pound of my own money out for the Fiesta over this? I, I don't know, I mean, it's quite a big amount of money. But if you're talking an extra 12 pounds a month, 15 pound a month, sorry, Suzuki, I'd go for the Fiesta. So that, on that, uh, and that's a like disappointing note for, for this Suzuki Swift Sport. Uh, that's it, the end of the uh, review. So, do not forget, there are plenty more videos and maybe some more tasty podcasts coming your way on the ITH channel. So, uh, hit the subscribe button, hit the like thing, and some notification bell, which is down there somewhere, I don't know. Tick all the things you want to tick them, and our uh, lovely videos will pop up in your subscriptions box thing. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye. And we have to say thanks to the guys at BOTB. They're giving you the chance to win one of five lots of £50 dream car credit towards winning your dream car at BOTB.com. They have a winner every week. You can play anywhere in the world and you only have to be 16 or over to enter. Tickets for the Suzuki Swift Sport are just 85p. All you need to do is make sure you're subscribed to this channel and BOTB will be picking five random subscribers on the 2nd of September 2019. Hit subscribe and you never know, you might be winning that dream car credit.